everybody, Scott Kelby here. Welcome to another episode of The Lightroom. I'm joined by... RC, what's going on everybody? Now this week you're kicking it up with a little quick tip. Got a quick tip for you about using the adjustment brush, but in particular when you want to paint with color. So a lot of folks don't realize that in the adjustment brush there is actually a way to paint with color. And the trick that I want to show you today, it's a really quick one, is how to paint with the color from inside your image. So for example, let's say that I wanted to steal the red from these chairs and be able to paint maybe uh, other parts of the image in that red tint. So you would go to the color picker right here down at the bottom. It's got, it's not even sure, <laughs> it's, just, it's just an X with a white right. square, so it's not even real super obvious. But what you're gonna do is click your cursor, your eyedropper cursor inside here, and you can see you can choose colors, right? But as long as you keep the mouse button down or your pen button clicked or whatever, you can move outside that dialog box and steal colors from any place in your image and it will apply it to, and it will that will become your foreground color. So choose a color and then just close the dialog box. And now if you wanted to go in here and paint the drapes with a tint of that color, that's some pretty sloppy painting I think I should turn on auto mask, but you get the idea. You can now go in here and paint with that tinted color. I'll, put it, I'll do it up here just so you can see a little better. But I wanna give you another second little tiny quick tip, it'll just take a second, is how do you get this back to no color? Right. Because it'll stay on, it'll be, everything will be printing, uh, excuse me, painting with a color. Right. All you have to do is double click on the word color and it resets it back to a color of none. Oh, very cool. And at any point in time, you can adjust the saturation of it and all that kind of stuff because you were painting it in a brush. Right. Nice. All right. Very cool. Now, I've got something on my side dealing with the concept of noise in pictures, right? So we have this picture here. This picture was shot at around ISO 4000, right? So that's... And it was shot on a camera that doesn't do real well at ISO 4000. Right. But this is what it looks like, right? You'll go inside of here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and just close some of these down, and look, noise Ooh, city. Ooh, yeah, noise galore. Right, so there's a lot of noise, right? The bird is suffering from a lot of noise, but there actually is two different types of noise that you see here. Like you see some color noise, right? Some yeah, reds, the reds and, greens and greens that are and sitting stuff. inside of this area, and then there's actual the actual noise for it. So a lot of the times people usually work with just noise reduction in this one area, and then just grab the slider, and they're like, oh, we're done, you're done. The color noise is something that, you know, I would suggest that you take a look at as well. Now, for here, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna grab the color noise and I'm gonna move this over to the right. Notice what's happening over here. A lot of that color that you had a problem with has been pulled. So now it doesn't have any kind of reds or greens inside of it, but you are left with. Yeah, now it's just noise. Now it's just straight up luminance noise. But at least it's, it's not, even if you just did that, at least it's not as, as uh distracting is seeing the color. Absolutely, absolutely. So now from here, what we'd want to do is actually get rid of the noise. So you can go over inside of the noise reduction and I'll grab that, grab the noise reduction slider and a lot of that noise has been pulled out. Yeah, and if tremendously. You take a look, it's, it's a big amount of noise reduction, right? So if you were looking at it before and after, right, we'll go ahead and zoom in. Yeah, a lot of that noise. Now you're working right. on a JPEG image there. When you're working on right. a raw image, it actually applies the noise reduction to the raw image. And that's that's very different when you think about buying a noise reduction plugin. Mm -hmm. Noise reduction plugins, for the most part, I think maybe there's one, but most of them actually wait until your image is an 8-bit JPEG, mm -hmm. then it tries to apply the, the, the uh, noise reduction. Uh, when Lightroom does it, you're actually able to apply it to the raw image. Right, now, let's take this a couple steps further, right? Because we're looking at this, and I'm like, okay, well, I'd like to be able to pull some more out of this. A couple of things that you can do. If you feel like you've lost a little bit of contrast inside of the picture, just grab the slider, move it over to the right, that's gonna increase some of that contrast. If you need to take the noise off of this even further still, grab your detail slider and slide it over to the left, and you're gonna notice that it's gonna smooth everything out. Be careful with this, though. When you do this, you will run into a snag where all of a sudden everything becomes overly soft and it'll be very telltale that you're working with noise reduction. What I would suggest is go to your brush. Inside of your brush here, I'm just gonna reset everything by double clicking on the effect and I'm gonna increase my sharpness. Now, once you have that done, I'm gonna paint on the bird with just sharpness. Now, and a lot of the times I'll do this when I'm doing noise reduction and sharpness adjustments because I think that you'll see a lot of that kind of noise reduction on blur. 
but you don't necessarily, you want to be able to have your blurry sections soft, right. your main sections a little bit sharp. Now, one of the reasons why that RC can get away with painting over that bird it, with sharpness, because anytime you add sharpness to a noisy area, it usually makes it noisier. Mm -hmm. But one of the reasons is, is think about noise in general. Noise in general is generally in the shadow parts of your image. Mm -hmm. That's why getting a proper exposure is is kind of important. It's actually, if you make a mistake and you overexpose, let's say that you overexpose by a stop, all right? And you have to lower the exposure from a, a, a one stop too bright down to normal, doesn't change your noise situation at all. It's just, it was brighter, now it's not. Noise, no difference. Right. However, if you underexpose by a stop and you have to go and increase the shadows or increase the overall exposure by a stop to get back to normal, Whatever noise was in that image yep. just pumps right up. In the bird here, RC is able to go in there and brighten it because it's a bright area of the photo. He can put sharpening on there. It's already bright. It's okay. Right. So if he went to the shadow areas and started painting a lot, it would take whatever's noise there, whatever noise is already there, and make it worse. Because this thing's bright, it's not a problem. Shadow areas are where the noise loves to live, and so he can get away with it on the, in this case very so, easily. And some very drastic changes that you've done just inside of that slider. So work with color, work with, uh, work with your color, work with luminance in case of any problems, deal with contrast and detail, and then remember, paint back some of that stuff back into the sharpness. And ideally, you would also do all of this to a raw image. You'll get absolutely. better results if you're working with the raw. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, I've got a tip for you on the uh, adjustment brush because okay. we're uh, while we're here living in the adjustment brush. So this is kind of one of those things that it, it may have snuck by you. Okay. And I want to explain the effect pop-up menu inside of the adjustment brush. So you've got uh, all these different ones. Why are they here? Well, one of the reasons is this. If you were to choose exposure, what it does is it just just zeroes everything else out and gets you ready to add exposure. If you choose uh, saturation, it bumps up the saturation by 25, it zeroes everything out. But I wanted, that's, I mean, that's just kind of how it works. I don't generally choose those because I can just double click like RC did a moment ago on effect. Okay. Zero everything out, then I can move a slider, not a big deal. However, the power of this doesn't, doesn't, doesn't live in resetting your sliders. The right. power of this is that Adobe has made some presets like burn dark and burn lighten. Uh, it's it's I, what they think are their ideal settings for iris enhancement, softening skin. And you'll notice that when you click soften skin, it lowers the clarity to 100, but then increases the sharpness to 25. So it's like a little, it's almost like a preset. So think of it as a brush preset to get an effect. Only the ones at the bottom, teeth whitening, softened skin, iris enhanced. Anyway, that kind of sets you up and gets you ready. It does zero everything else out, but then it pops in some good settings for nice. you. Nice, very, very cool. All right, why don't we do this? Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we've got a couple more things that we want to talk about right here on the Lightroom Show. We'll see you guys in a bit. I was drawn to the hot active lava just for the pure intensity of it. The incredible birth of the earth. The volcano had several elements as a photographer that fascinated me, the light and the movement, just the raw power of it. To me as a photographer, it's, it's as good as it gets. Welcome back everybody, RC here. Now listen, before we go into the next tutorial, allow me a second. I wanna talk a little bit about this. A lot of you guys have gotten the bundle, right? The Creative Cloud Photography Bundle with yep. Photoshop and Lightroom for $10 a month. That means that you have Photoshop. I want to turn you on to this book right here. Good so this call, is RC. the Photoshop for Lightroom Users book. Now, this book is not about Lightroom. Mm -mm. It was written by Scott Kelby. That's me. And it's designed to be able to teach you when Lightroom does a lot of different types of things, but there's sometimes that you're going to have to go into Photoshop, right? It's small, yeah, because it's one of those things where it's like, this is where Lightroom stops, this is where Lightroom starts. Yeah, I just cover the stuff that you'd have to jump to Photoshop for. That's right, so you gave away, I think, 10 copies of this I at did, one point. I did, uh, two weeks ago on the blog, yeah, right. two, three so weeks ago. So there's a bunch of different information there. Make sure you take a look at it at Amazon, you can take a look at it on any book retailer. You can also go right here on the Cubby One website, 
it's a great place for you to pick it up as well. Now, Scott, you have a tutorial on Lightroom Mobile. I do. I love Lightroom Mobile, and uh, I want to show you a little tip here because uh, we've talked quite a lot about you know how Lightroom Mobile. It's really just Lightroom, right? It's just right. where you're using it. But anyway, so Lightroom on your desktop here, how it interacts with Lightroom Mobile, and and the. the the methodology has always been you create a collection in Lightroom, mm -hmm. you sync it, and now it appears on your mobile devices. And your mobile devices include Android phones or iPhones or your tablet or like an, or an iPad. It, it's not quite yet on the uh, Android tablets. I hope that'll be coming soon, but you know, keep your fingers crossed. But in the meantime, uh, what we haven't talked about is you don't actually need to use Lightroom Mobile with Lightroom Desktop. It can just hmm. be its own thing. Okay. So you can actually just work with the images that you take with your cell phone camera with your tablet. So uh, I'll show you what you how to do this. Uh, let's just go here to, um, to, um, to Lightroom Mobile. And let me just scroll up here. There's a little plus sign up in the top corner. Let's click on it and create a new collection. And of course, it, it automatically puts the date and time in there for you, which is really not handy. <laughs> we'll call this um, uh, iPhone photos or whatever you want to call it. And then we'll click OK. All right, now, you notice that a new collection appears at the very bottom. It's not synced to anywhere yet, and it says Add from Camera Roll. And, and if, you have, if you're on an Android device, I think it says Add from your Photos Vault or something along those lines. You're going to click on that little plus sign button, and it's going to access your camera roll. Uh, the first time you do it, by the way, at least on, on uh, the iPhone, it's going to say, you know, is it okay if Lightroom accesses your camera roll? But right. you're going to click on that plus sign. It's going to go to your camera roll. And here are the images inside your camera roll, and you can just tap on any ones that you want to bring in, and you're good to go. Just hit the little um, check mark up at the top right corner, and it'll bring them right in. Now, what's interesting is, once you do bring these in, it will sync that collection. Not only does it sync it back to your desktop, it sends the high-resolution versions back to your desktop. So, <laughs> does it really? Yeah, it does. Well, because <laughs> y y you want the, the high-res ones like back here, because normally what happens is on Lightroom desktop, it makes smart previews mm -hmm. and sends those here. So the originals are here, and it sends them to there as smart previews. In this case, the originals are here. It's got to send them back. It's got to send them back. That's great. I, I had never even right? thought about the phone, and I'm like, <laughs> now I'm like, this changes a lot. Well, no, all right. no, oh, we're no. going to talk about this later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, this is great. That's actually very cool. I didn't even know that. I'm okay. I've got some ideas. <laughs> so anyway, I want to give you guys a quick tip. When you're working inside of the develop module, all right? Let's say I have this picture here of my friends Roz and Carl, and I want to be able to do some changes to it, some quick keyboard shortcuts. If you use the plus sign, you're going to notice that you're actually cycling down through. And that's the period key, by the way. Yeah, the period key. <laughs> period key. Sorry, the period key. You're actually cycling through the settings. If you use the comma, you cycle up. So you yep. can go up and down as you see fit. Now, once you get there, you can use the plus and minus yeah, to move increase, your sliders. Right. So I, it's, a lot it's of a folks way. like to do that. I talk to people all the time that are like, you know, I just want to quickly do some small, small adjustments. I want to move around, and I don't want to have to grab a slider every time. So you're basically just going up and down by using common period, and you're using plus and minus to adjust all of your stuff. Not bad. I think it's a, it's a, it's a great little tutorial. Guys, listen, we do this show for you guys every week. We provide a lot of content. We know that it's a little bit short, and we know that a lot of you guys are going to want to see a great amount of Lightroom stuff. Make sure you go to Kelby One. Kelby One is where we provide 24 hours a day, seven days a week, the world's best training in Photoshop, Lightroom, and photography. You can take a look at an annual membership or a monthly membership. If you want to be able to see more of this stuff, this is the place to do it. Yeah. KelbyOne.com. We would love to have you as a, a member. Hey, we always wrap up the show with uh, featuring the work of a photographer that we admire. Uh, this week, we're going to talk about photographer Ken Kamineski. Uh, Ken is an amazing travel photographer. Love his stuff. He's a really great guy as well. Uh, he's got a terrific uh, site. Go, go check it out. Go, his work is, he's got some really, really nice stuff. Yeah. And, great uh, work. Great really, work. Really good guy, really great work, and give him a check out if you get a chance. All right, so thanks so much for stopping by. We will see you guys next week here on the Lightroom Show. Take care. Take care, everybody.